What about if we put this down? How does it? Oh, oh, wow. That's a look. knows it's almost Halloween. Oh, hello. Nice of you to join me. As I was saying, it's almost Halloween, which is one of my favorite times of the year, next to Christmas. And while I don't think I'll be dressing up this year because there's not really anywhere to go, 2020. Halloween is still one of my favorite times of the year, and I absolutely want to celebrate it. So when I found these scraps of fabric, at a local thrift store. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. I have a very limited quantity. There's definitely not enough to make a costume for myself, but I do know someone considerably smaller, and let's be honest, cuter than me. So right away when I found this, I knew I wanted to make a miniature Sherlock Holmes costume, but what exactly does that entail? For reference, let's turn to our friend, Scooby. First off, we're going to need the iconic deer stalker hat, then an Inverless cloak or cape, and under that we have a waistcoat with a high collar and a tie of some sort. For this video, we're going to start with the hat. It's such an iconic hat that I think if I did only the hat, it would still be recognizable as a Sherlock Holmes costume. So I did a quick search for deer stalker hat. And that turned up a lot of patterns and from there I just chose one that looked good and guessed on what size it's going to be printed because of course there are no patterns for corgi deer stalker hat. So we're just guessing at the size here. We're going to do some trial and error and I think because I have a very limited quantity of this fabric we're going to end up doing a mock-up first to make sure that the size looks okay. We just have to learn how to make a deer stalker hat. The materials I'll be using include the fashion fabric, some scrap fabric, a pair of scissors, fabric pins, the pattern pieces, some thread, and a sense of adventure. Just gonna try this on now and we're going for fit not for style thank goodness be oh because this is gonna look pretty ridiculous right now but you know I'd say the size looks pretty good so we can go ahead and cut it out of our real fabric now So here we have all the pieces cut out and sewn together. This, you can see, it's the main part of the hat. And while I didn't worry too much about pattern matching, I did at least try to keep the pattern pieces running in the same direction so it at least looks a bit cohesive. And then these are the ear flaps. They're just two pieces sewn together with some bias binding around the edges there to help it stand out a little bit against the hat. These will get sewn on and then this, we have the two brims here. These are each just made from two pieces sewn together with a piece of really cheap but stiff interfacing in the middle because as you can see, the hat here, the fabric, it's kind of floppy. You see, it doesn't want to hold its shape super well and that's fine for the hat because I'll be stuffing it so it keeps its shape, but for the brim, I didn't want it to be flopping down over her eyes. I wanted to keep it nice and stiff, so I threw that piece of interfacing in there. 
All right, so quick update. I've got everything all sewn together now and it was looking great. I was super excited about it. And then I realized that rookie mistake, I sewed these ear flaps on in the wrong direction. They look great when the ear flaps are down. You can see that this edge is nice and clean. But the fact of the matter is that this hat is supposed to live with these ear flaps up. Like that's the look of the costume. And if they do that, then the raw edges are all exposed here. So I think I'm actually going to take these ear flaps off and sew them on in the other direction so that they have the clean edge once they're sitting up. Also, I realized that I had to throw in an extra layer of stitching here. You can kind of see this line of stitching here because otherwise the brim was wanting to live like this, like just sitting up and that's not quite the look we're going for. So um, I realized that if I throw in this layer of stitches here, now you can see that the brim of the hat wants to sit a bit more where it's supposed to for the Sherlock Holmes look. So yeah, let's go fix these ear flaps. So I think the final decorative touch was a thin strip of fabric, which I cut out, folded in half, sewed together, turned inside out, ironed, and strategically tacked at a few different places along the base of the hat. Well, I'm pretty sure the original Sherlock hat didn't include elastic, but then again, I don't think the original Sherlock was a corgi. <laughs> oh, Canal, honey. Where are your ears? You look so handsome. What about... What about if we put this down? How does that... Oh, oh, wow. That's a look. This is like grumpy old man. That's you. <laughs> Quite the look, Kenna. What's wrong? What's wrong with your hat? Goof. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you guys had fun. I know I sure did. And if you liked it, join me next week as we finish the ensemble, including the Inverness cloak and the accessories. Bye.